and welcome. I'm Jill Carter, a member of the Lyceum, the Gloucester Lyceum, the library committee that plans and sponsors this evening of Gloucester Reading Poetry. Our committee approaches this event with high glee. It is without doubt one of the highlights of our year. So much so that it is the third time we have sponsored such a program of Gloucester citizens joining together to read their favorite poems. In fact, I can't remember any other program in my 10 years on the committee that has merited such repetition. And I don't know whether this is because of the poem each reader selects or the explanation of why it is her, his or her favorite poem. Perhaps it has simply something to do with the fact that poetry is a very personal medium. Our readers are known to us in a certain way. Then suddenly, just through the reading of a poem, we see them in a very different light. Before our eyes, they become more than they were. We are honored this evening to have Gloucester's Poet Laureate here to introduce our readers. Ruth Ann Collinson, known as Rufus, has worked as a journalist, an editor, bookkeeper, and turkey farmer. <laughs> she has lived in Gloucester since birth, and Gloucester is the source and spirit of her poetry. As Poet Laureate, she is working with the schools to provide writing programs for Gloucester youth. She is also planning poetry events for the community. Her poems have been published in various journals and in two collections by Folly Cove Books. Thank you. Good evening. I love this event. I love the, the, the very nature of it. Um, I'm wondering, is Rob Newton here? Okay. <laughs> he was going to be our first reader. Um, so if, if he comes in, we'll, we'll just have him read then. <laughs> also, um, another reader, Rosa Binda, who is um, from Brazil and is going to read her poem in both Portuguese and English, but she's ill tonight, so she won't be able to be with us. Um, we decided not to have anyone else read the poem, but have her participate the next time. So we're sorry that she's not here. So we're, we're going to be traveling through this evening alphabetically. <laughs> so if it, that means that Greg Solder will be our first reader. And Greg's going to be reading Mending Wall by Robert Frost. And he'll explain his choice when he gets here. Greg is the president of the board of the Gloucester Lyceum and Sawyer Free Library. He lives in Magnolia with his wife, Frances Fitch, and builds pipe organs with C.B. Fisk throughout the country and around the world. On May 9th, the Rotary will, have, will honor him for his service to our community. Greg. share of these walls that run through the life of any New Englander 
who cares for the land. Something there is that doesn't love a wall, that sends the frozen ground swell under it, and spills the upper boulders in the sun, and make gaps even two can pass abreast. The work of hunters is another thing. I have come after them and made repair where they have left not one stone on a stone. But they would have the rabbit out of hiding to please the yelping dogs. The gaps, I mean. No one has seen them made or heard them made. But at spring mending time, we find them there. I let my neighbor know beyond the hill, and on a day we meet to walk the line and set the wall between us once again. We keep the wall between us as we go, to each the boulders that have fallen to each. And some are loaves, and some so nearly balls we have to use a spell to make them balance. Stay where you are until our backs are turned. We wear our fingers rough with handling them. Oh, just another kind of outdoor game, one on a side. It comes to little more. There where it is, we do not need the wall. He is all pine and I am apple orchard. My apple trees will never get across and eat the cones under his pines, I tell him. He only says, Good fences make good neighbors. Spring is the mischief in me, and I wonder if I could put a notion in his head. Why do they make good neighbors? Isn't it where there are cows? But here there are no cows. Before I built a wall, I'd ask to know what I was walling in or walling out, and to whom I was like to give offense. Something there is that doesn't love a wall, that wants it down. I could say elves to him, but it's not elves exactly, and I'd rather he said it for himself. I see him there bringing a stone grasped firmly by the top in each hand, like an old stone <coughs> savage armed. He moves in darkness, as it seems to me not of woods only and the shade of trees. He will not go behind his father's saying, and he likes having thought of it so well, he says again, good fences make good neighbors. <laughs>